Hey there, how's it going? Great to see you. Now tonight we've got something rather special happening. It's a full lunar eclipse and I've got a rather special camera that I'm going to use to take some photos and video of it. It's this thing here which is the Nikon Coolpix P1000. Now if you're unfamiliar with this camera the reason it's so special and um, quite a different and unique camera is that it's got this 24 to 3000 millimeter lens on it. Now, I don't know how much you know about lenses, but 3000mm is pretty intense. A normal long lens that you might use for photography might be around the 85 to 135, maybe 200mm range. Um, sports cameras might get up to 400 or 500mm. 3000mm? Well, that means you can take photos of the moon. In fact, it zooms in so close that you've actually got to pull back a bit, and around about 2000mm will be where you get the moon completely filling the frame so i'm going to take this beast outside and use that to get some great photos but there's a couple of things that i'm going to need to do first to make sure that i can get the best quality photos i can as you can see here the camera has a specific moon photo setting now when you choose this moon mode on the p1000 it automatically sets a bias for specifically taking photos of the moon that means that it limits the ISO to 1600 for example it will shoot with an f-stop between 5 and 8 rather than the 2.8 to 8 range it can normally use and also adjust the shutter speed specifically for getting good shots of the moon and while it's doing all of this it's able to um, use the motion stabilization in here to make sure that you get a good sharp image because don't forget the moon is moving all the time as well and that can cause motion blur and stuff when you're shooting a long distance and the final thing is it sets up a three second timer as you can see right here so that when you're taking the photo you can step away from the camera and not bump it all so that the camera itself isn't going to be moving now this can present a couple of problems of course because you want to see what you're shooting is one of the things and the other thing is you're unable to see the controls and stuff on the back when the camera is on a tripod hooked up like this the screen on this fortunately does pop out and can spin around and it's got a lot of flexibility so um, you can do that and sort of see what you're doing still but it's really hard to find the movie button or the shoot button well the shoot button's on top but if you want to shoot footage it's down below so i thought well what i'll do is i'll use some other toys i've got here to set up a bit of a rig so that i can shoot this remotely and get a really good image so to get started here i've got a fluid head tripod um, this is one that will take about eight kilos so that's well inside spec i'm just going to pop the sled out of there and put that onto the bottom of the camera and i just slot the camera into the head and snap it into place so that's nice and secure in here and i'm going to be tilting this all the way back so i'll just get the strap out of the way and pull the the screen out and around and i'm going to lift the handle here all the way up the top like that so that i can control it from lower down real easily and i'll just tilt i'll be tilting that all the way up like that and probably moving the legs as well because i'm going to need to be shooting this almost completely vertically now what i want to do is add something into here so that i can monitor it remotely now i'm going to be monitoring this using this fm7 monitor from fnv it's a basic um, seven inch field monitor really great color reproduction and it has a lot of the false color and uh, focus assist tools and that sort of things built into it it's got sdi and hdmi ports on the back of it here and you can run it off an fp battery just like one of the uh, normal sony batteries that we have lying around for everything and you can also run it off um, 12 volt of a couple of different types of power adapters as well so the great great little toy this one um, it's also got tally on it in case you're interested in that as well so uh, if you're hooking that up to a camera system we're using tally that's got that on there and um, to be able to get the video signal to it I'm going to use the Hollyland Mars 400s Pro set because I, if I hook this up with this I can put one on the camera one on the monitor 
and that means I can get a signal to them without needing a cable between them so I can be any distance away which is really useful when it's as cold as it is at the moment and um, not have to knock the monitor by pulling a cable accidentally and, and moving the camera around when I'm trying to get a steady shot. So I'm going to hook the transmitter here up to the camera and that's real easy. You just slide that on there and tighten that up. There we go. Just a normal cold shoe mount and a couple of aerials here that I'm just going to screw in real quickly and that there's all ready to go except for the HDMI cable which I'll fit in later. Um, the other one just needs an HDMI cable of course to go between the monitor and the video receiver so that's really easy as well. So here we are, it's all set up, I've got the camera set up on the tripod, it's a good fluid head tripod so it's not going to drift on me while I'm shooting, I've got the wireless sender receiver for the signal and I've got the SnapBridge app set up on my phone here so I can remotely trigger and control the camera from that without having to push buttons on it and bump it and move it around all the time. So now I'm going to head outside and um, get some photos of this moon before it's too late. Now before I start getting some footage with the P1000 I thought I'd grab the A7S II before I um, set it up and get some footage of the moon with that so that you can do a comparison. I'm using the Sony 24-135 kit lens at the moment um, and this is handheld so it's a bit shaky to be honest. Uh, you'll notice that that more than anything else and I'm just trying to set the ISO and ND at the moment to be able to make sure that I can get the best image out of it I can that was not bad that's a bit overblown now I'll just tone that back a bit but the main thing you're going to notice here is that is the steadiness which is actually not too bad in this actually there we go there we go that's a bit better a bit more clarity that's not bad there and this is the difference when you're shooting at 2000 millimeters instead of 135 and of course this camera can zoom in a lot more just shooting video at the moment which is a little bit more limited than taking photographs of the p1000 but as you can see it's an incredibly clear image especially for something that's uh, nikon's toy camera kind of range the point and click cameras and finally we get to the photographs that i took of the lunar eclipse I've used a number of focal lengths from about 1500 millimeters up to 3000 millimeters, and I even tried a couple of shots with the expanded digital zoom which will actually take this up to about 6000 millimeters, but not terribly usable. As you can see the automatic settings uh, change the aperture from anything from about 5 to 8 and shutter speeds from around about 1 second all the way up to 1 500th and a variety of ISOs as well which um, shows how varied you need to set things to get a good shot of the moon and I have to say that if it wasn't for the automation in the P1000 to be able to do this for moon shots it would be very very difficult to chase all of these settings and get them optimized for a really clear moon shot like you can get out of this And there you have it, that's my setup and the process I go through for taking moon photography with the P1000. As you can see it's a pretty spectacular camera and really is purpose built for doing this. Anyway I hope you found it useful, if you have and you want to see more videos like this hit the subscribe button just down here and of course don't forget to watch this video and this video because they're really going to help you out as well. YouTube picked them just for you you know. And I will see you in another video. Oh, don't forget to leave any comments or questions down below as well. See you later.